Throughout my time as a special operations coach, I've worked with over 100 candidates. One of the most common issues I see in athletes is a lack of full body resilience and strength to be successful. As a consequence, those candidates display physical deficiencies, which then manifest in mental limitations of what they believe their body can and cannot do. In this video, I'll show you the best framework to bulletproof yourself for selection, including walking you step by step through the movements you need to master, the muscle groups you should bias your training towards, and how to organize them in a week routine that builds you not only physically but also mentally. But what does it mean to bulletproof yourself? A bulletproof athlete is somebody who's strong, physically resilient, and possesses an anti-fragile mindset. The first point on physical strength is simple. This involves being able to push, pull, and pick up heavy objects. To be physically resilient means you're not just performant while fresh. You can do a hard session with heavy logs and then quickly bounce back to hit a timed 5 mile run, long rock, and then do it all over again the next day. The final component is an anti-fragile mindset set which may be new to you. The term was coined in 2012 by a Lebanese essayist and mathematical statistician Nassim Taleb. In his book, he draws a distinction between resilient systems which recover to their previous state after stressors or failure, and then what he calls the anti-fragile system, which actually increases in capability as a result of stressors or failure. And while as humans we have limitations on what our body can and cannot do, you can choose to have an anti-fragile mindset in which you view difficult workouts or obstacles not as a punishment or setback, but as actually a challenge in which you will emerge stronger and better than before. But before we talk about how to become bulletproof, I want to shatter the myth of stretching and mobility, because you are not going to stretch your way to becoming bulletproof. In fact, your stretching could be doing more harm than good. Here's why. Stretching actually lengthens your muscles, which enhances their range of motion. But if you're doing this stretching, you're assuming that increasing the range of motion is actually a good thing. What happens during impact or under stress in those stretched positions? If you're merely stretching a muscle through its range of motion without resistance or strengthening it, you're setting yourself up for a major weakness and vulnerability in those positions. This lack of strength at the end range of motion can lead to injuries. Let's use powerlifters as an example. They typically don't stretch, especially for muscles like the pecs which are heavily involved in the bench press. Their limited range of motion actually works to their advantage, offering a stretch reflex and additional tension which increases their max strength and power. It's no surprise that static stretching has been shown to impair strength and power prior to testing. And while you certainly want to be more nimble than a power lifter, what advantage do you have at selection by being able to do full splits or have extreme flexibility? In my view, stretching beyond the range of motion required for your core pressing, squatting, pulling, and other selection movements is unnecessary. The more effective alternative is training your muscles through their full range of motion but with resistance. Exercises like Bulgarian split squats or deficit Romanian deadlifts are excellent examples. These not only provide a deep stretch to the target muscle but also develop strength at the same time. These are the kind of exercises exercises that I'll recommend. But before I talk about those exercises and the specific workouts, there are five categories of exercise you have to perform well at to be successful, and this is true across all branches. The first is heavy load carriage. This is moving boats or heavy rocks from point A to point B. And where many go wrong is assuming that just because you're working 12 miles, they think it's an endurance event. In reality, your upper back, traps, and legs can easily fatigue first and give out well before your aerobic conditioning does. Second is weighted carries. You need to have an iron grip. And no matter how fast you are, it doesn't matter if you can't pick up or grip the weight. Third is unweighted running. Not just to hit your timed 4 or 5 mile runs, but you also need to be comfortable and efficient at low intensity paces for long durations day after day, especially when transitioning between events. Fourth is multi-purpose calisthenics and strength. This is a catch-all category for your calisthenics sessions, obstacle courses, or any other multi-purpose set of exercises. For this, you need to be well-rounded and have a high level of strength endurance. And then fifth is swimming and water confidence. If you're already training the first four categories and in good shape, all you need to do is master the technique. The master guide to swimming in water confidence is on the channel and will be linked in the description. Across these exercise categories, there are three body parts that I bias my athletes training towards to maximize their chance of success. First is the legs. It's possible to get selected without squatting or deadlifting, but where all else is equal, stronger is better. And there is no muscle group that takes more of a beating across running, rocking, and load carriage than the legs. And the best way to train them is through heavy squatting and deadlifting. Pistol squats and bodyweight lunges do not come close to the stimulus you achieve when hitting deep, full range of motion Romanian deadlifts or squats with 225 or more pounds. And the back is the second most important body part. Weighted pull-ups and heavy rows are staples of my athlete's back training. Not only do these improve your pulling strength and have the nice side effect of training your grip, but we're also improving static back strength, which is often overlooked. Static back strength is critical so that when you're on mile 9 of your 12-mile run, 
rock with 65 pounds on your back, your maximal back strength is so strong that the 65 pounds feels relatively light. And what many people with this strength take for granted is that even if that 65 pounds feels heavy in those final miles, imagine how much heavier it would feel if you just did bodyweight training or never touched weights. It would be a lot harder. The next muscle group is your forearms and grip. There's a lot of ways you can train grip, and it's not just through targeted training like dumbbell or trap bar farmer carries. Heavy dumbbell rows and pull-ups both train the forearms, and I also like static holds, which can be combined with abdominal work like leg raises and toes to bar. What I want you to understand is that to become bulletproof means you need to get out of your comfort zone. This means taking some time away from the calisthenics, rocking, running, and swimming, and developing a base of strength and muscle mass to become physically resilient. There is a reason why a study of 795 candidates at Army Special Forces Assessment and Selection found that muscle mass was the greatest predictor of success, and the candidates in the top quartile of muscle mass had six times the odds of getting selected than those with the least amount of muscle mass. Even if you're maxing the PFT, IFT, or APFT today, if you don't have experience under heavy weight, your central nervous system has never felt or acclimated to the stimulus and fatigue that comes with heavy strength training. But it's not only strength gains you're losing out on with resistance training. When you do it, you're also building up your ligaments and tendons increasing your bone mineral density, which reduces your odds of injury. This is well documented that candidates with higher bone mineral density have greater odds of selection success. Just look at the chart. But that doesn't mean that you need to train like a power lifter or even train strength more than three times per week. Here's a simple two day per week full body workout to train both strength and strength endurance, which leaves you plenty of time to focus on your running, rucking, and non-impact cardio. Both workouts begin with three to four heavy compound exercises with an extra focus on the back and legs. You'll Notice that each day includes a single heavy pressing movement, either overhead press on day A or close grip bench press on day B. And following the compound exercises, you will jump into a multi-round circuit. I've chosen exercises to bias muscle groups which are especially important at selection. However, you should adjust these workouts based on your strengths and weaknesses. To become bulletproof, you also need to prioritize your endurance and have experience being on your feet for long periods of time. This means hitting your long 2 hour or more rocks and 9 plus mile runs. This workout split includes our two heavy strength days, one calisthenic session, a selection specific workout, and four running or rocking sessions. What you'll notice about this routine is that we begin the week with our high intensity strength session and hard running or rocking intervals all on the same day. And to many, this is counterintuitive, but here's why it makes sense. Since they're both taxing the same muscle groups and both workouts will require a significant amount of time to recover, it's better to condense your lower and interval session into a single workout and day so you're not destroying yourself twice in the same week. By combining them, we can follow up this Monday session with a low intensity day on Tuesday. Whereas if we split them up, there's just not enough days in the week to allow for two low intensity days, a rest day, and hit the other planned workouts for the week. On Wednesday, we have a moderate intensity tempo or threshold run. On Thursday, we're recovered enough to hit our second hard strength session. And then on Friday, we'll go into a selection specific workout followed by a run or rock at zone three. Make sure you watch the video on selection specific workouts for more info or sign up to receive the full four week workout program. I'm discussing here for free at the link in the description. And then our final workout of the week is a Saturday long low intensity endurance session of either running or rocking. Before sharing the bonus tip, I want to highlight the importance of mindset and effort. Two identical twins can perform the same workout routine, and if twin A is going through the motions while twin B is training hard and focused, then twin B is going to see way more progress. Never forget that the most important variable in your training is not necessarily what you do, but it's the effort and how you do it that will make or break your results. Results. Every week you should have a few workouts that you feel a healthy amount of anxiety for because you know they're going to be hard. You need to embrace the anti-fragile mindset and acknowledge that it's in those workouts you're testing your limits. And you may even fail to meet your own expectations, but that's okay if that happens. Give it your best and then come back the next day mentally stronger with an understanding of what it takes to be better. I also want to point out that not every session should be max effort. That's why when you look at the workout routine that I've shared, there were two high intensity days and not seven. If you're training to max effort every day, I'm sorry to say that either you're not doing that or that routine is not sustainable for more than a few weeks. My bonus tip for this video is to not overthink it. There's a lot of variables that you can juggle and think about in your training. I want you to look at your routine, make the adjustments that you have to, and just do it. Do your best to eat well, sleep well, and train hard, and that's where the progress is going to come from. Focus on mastering the big blocks of your training and getting them right, rather than on micro-optimizations that won't make a big difference either way. If you enjoyed, like this video, and to learn how to master swimming in water confidence, click the video on the screen.